Hey, who is it? Reveal yourself. Oh, darling, it's you. Oh, I miss you. Oh, come here. Huh? What's with the spear? Oh, you know, one can never be too cautious. These aren't exactly the best of times to be an orc, you know? But enough of that. Come in. And hey, Boots, I just wiped the floor. <laughs> oh yeah, because I'm an orc, I gotta be dirty, right? Because everybody knows that all orcs are dirty and filthy and mean, right? Just like all dwarves are greedy and all halflings are fat and lazy, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, darling. I guess I'm just a little touchy right now. Watching almost everyone you knew running hither and thither mindlessly, slaying themselves or casting themselves in pits or fleeing, wailing back to hide in holes and dark, lightless places far from hope will do that to you, you know? What? No, I don't. I don't resent that they lost. Um, that we lost. That we... <sighs> You know how sometimes you end up in something and you didn't really want to? Like, one day you just rub your eyes and find that suddenly you're raiding villages for black horses for the Nazgul and you don't really know how you got there? Like, I was never really into the whole taking over the world, casting everything into everlasting darkness sort of thing. All I ever wanted was really just to have my little house with my little garden and grow some cabbages, and carrots, and potatoes, and bake biscuits in my little kitchen, and sit on my porch in the evening so I could watch the sunset and sip some tea from the skulls of my slain enemies. Oh, speaking of which, how rude of me. Can I offer you a skull of tea? Um, wait, I got something really special for you. Now, where did I- Ah, there it is. Isn't he a beauty? He used to belong to some huge-ass Yurk chieftain who apparently saw the necessity to voice his opinion that in his eyes my butt was too big, so I stabbed him through the guts and chopped this big boy right off his shoulders. Usually I won't let anyone else drink from it. Oh, but I let you drink from it. <laughs> What's with that face? Don't worry, it's clean. I always very diligently scrape the flesh off new skulls. I really can't stand those grubby orcs who would serve you mead in a skull that still has, like, half a face clinging onto it. Like, really? Ugh, yuck. So, what do you want? We have chamomile tea, or peppermint, or... Huh? No, no, I don't think I have a... Uh... What's a glass? What? No, I'm serious. Wait, is this a riddle of some sort? Well, when you heat up sand, you get hot sand, right? Oh, even hotter than that? Um... Oh, <gasps> you mean to tell me that you make drinking skulls out of hot sand? You elves are pretty strange fellows, you know that? Oh, could you please close the door behind you? There are still bands of men and elves roaming this forest. Uh, no offense. You know what I mean. As I said, these are not the best of times to be an orc. What? No, I'm fine. No, no, no. I don't need a hug, don't worry. <sighs> you know what? Scrap that. I do want a hug. Come here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll put my spear away first. Oh, this feels so nice. Thank you. Oh, don't you worry about me. I'm a big orc girl already. I can look after myself. Hey, that doesn't mean you can just stop hugging me. Come back here. What? Yeah, I didn't get too many hugs before I met you. <laughs> Guess it figures, huh? In the Black Army, it's always just like, Rawr! Stand to attention! 
Rawr! Guard this outpost! Rawr! Slaughter these innocents! And nobody ever asks if maybe you just really need a hug, you know? What? The nightmares? Oh, you know, just sometimes. But it's been getting a lot better now that I have you to snuggle up to at night. But yeah, sometimes I still see the towers of the Black Gate sway and fall. Huh? Oh, that's so sweet of you. You're glad that I made it out alive? Well, as to that, uh, you see, I didn't actually fight in the last battle, or in the battle before that. Or, well, in any battle, to be honest. You see, after my little fallout with that Yurk chieftain, I was detailed to, uh, latrine fatigue. Excuse me, that is not as- that is not quite as innocuous as you make it sound. Have you ever been to a latrine after a troll used it? I tell you, the dead marshes are a bouquet of roses compared to that. Hey, stop laughing. Well, anyways, at least it spared me getting slaughtered by that great white-skinned king. Gosh, what a foul maggot. Sharkular Bankra! Sky! What do you call him? King Elisar? Wait, how can you defend this vile maggot? He bathes in the blood of a hundred war puppies every morning to retain his fresh and youthful appearance. Well, my captain told me. Okay, yeah. My captain probably wasn't the most credible source of information. Wait, so you mean he doesn't? But then, how does he retain his fresh and youthful appearance? I mean, he is 88 and his skin looks... Oh my. No puppy blood, huh? So then, I guess he also doesn't secretly build weapons of mass destruction? Wait, wait, does that mean they led me on the long march from my home entirely based on lies and threats? Even though I really would rather have stayed in there in peace? Holy crap! <sighs> but anyways, that guy slaughtered a ton of my folks. And say what you want, but some of those orcs are my buddies, you know? And I mean, I didn't exactly like everything they did like the whipping and the backstabbing, but still. I'm sorry? What do you mean they picked the wrong side? Do you think anyone picks that side? Like, have you been to Mordor? The whole place is just like one giant plain of ash and slag and burned stone. And there is not a single daisy to be found far and wide. Oh, and did I tell you? We have daisies here, right before our window. I've been staring at them all morning. They're awesome. Well, anyway, nobody really chooses to fight for Mordor. Most people really just want to be left alone and have nothing to do with the whole war and stuff. But where there is a whip, there is a way. Like, I remember when the Herodrim popped up to reinforce our ranks, and they marched in through the Black Gate, and they were like, What the heck is this place? And apparently, they believed the Dark Lord was their god, Morgoth, come again. Or something. And he had told them he would give them great gifts and power and knowledge and whatnot, and fight with them against the evil Gondorians. And then they walk into Mordor, and it's just this massive pile of ashes and dirt. And they're like, Wow! What have we gotten ourselves into here? But you know, once that black gate closes behind you, you can't exactly just turn around and go back to your cozy little home down there in Old Harad. And they at least had a cozy little home somewhere. I was born into that charred pile of rubble. The coziest thing I had when I grew up was my favorite frock. What? Yeah, another hug would be great. 
<gasps> Thank you. Oh, yeah. You, of course, would have been the one orc to swim against the tide. Even when all your brothers and your father and your grandfather and your uncles and your cousin and all your best friends are all fighting for the Great High. Plus, do you know what they do to deserters? I mean, you get assigned latrine fatigue for some minor infraction like gutting your chieftain. And then there's Nazgul. Oh, the Nazgul, they always walk around like they own the place. Like, oh, look at me. I'm a 4,000-year-old incorporeal wraith. Oh, check this out. I have a ring of power. Gosh, I hate them. Everybody does, really. But they're the favorites of the big boss, so there's no use grumbling over it. He has a thing for them. Like, even when they mess up. Down on the barracks, they've rumored that they were sent out to hunt for some halfling. All nine of them. And they messed it up? I mean, let's be real here. How hard can it be to catch some fat little halfling? If I'd come back empty-handed to the Dark Tower, they would have fed me to the little shalab. But the Nazgul? Oh no. Not a word against the Nazgul. The Nazgul are so amazing. Let's all try to be more like the Nazgul. Push Doug Nazgul Oh, I'm sorry, Ani. Apparently I fall back into black speech and I get upset. Yeah, we all had to learn it in school back in the day. But we don't actually use it that much. I mean, really. Ash next therapy. That sounds like you're trying to cough up a bone stuck in your throat. Anyways, I'm not the only one who wanted out. You know, on the quiet, there was always some talk about scramming down at the tower of Sirith Ungal. There was this one dude who was on the night shift with me, and he had a cousin over in Moria who was running a pretty neat mithril operation, and we once discussed just legging it and joining him. <sighs> some days after latrine fatigue, I was really this close to just grabbing my spear and making tracks. But then, I met you. Yeah, okay, met probably isn't the right word. But to be fair, you were coming toward me in full battle armor with a sword drawn. Oh, come on. You are severely misrepresenting the events. No, I did not. Okay, yeah, I did club you over the head with a... Oh, um, the thing I clubbed you over the head with wasn't a battle mace? Then what was it? Uh, um, well, <laughs> you have to clean the latrines with something. Darling, are you sure you don't want a skull of tea? Because you look like you could really do with a skull of tea right now. Are you sure? You just want a hug? Alright, that's fine with me. But at least you have to admit, we have a pretty nifty story of how we met each other. Picture that, when all the other couples babble about how they met at a spring dance or at a wedding or something, I can go, oh yeah, I hit my darling over the head with a... What? It'll make for a great icebreaker. <laughs> Why did I spare you? I spared you because, uh, I thought it might be advantageous to have an elf who owes you their life. It certainly had nothing to do with you having a cute butt. Uh, and really, why did you attack the latrine in the first place? And didn't they teach you to go before battle? You thought it was a fortification? Why? Mm-hmm. So you mean to tell me that elven latrines don't have battlements and iron-studded doors? Then how do you keep others out when you're in there and you just want some peace and quiet? A sign on the door that says occupied? 
Okay. When you say it like that, it sounds kind of obvious. Oh, what is this? You got something for me? Oh, you didn't have to. Potatoes? Were they meant for dinner? Because I already finished making it. It's in the kitchen. We can just have it whenever- Oh! They're for my garden? Because I said I wanted some? I can just plant them and they'll grow into- Oh, darling. Come here. Mwah. This is amazing. I already got so much stuff in my garden. Did I mention we have daisies right in front of our window? I love them so much. Oh, and just you wait. When spring comes, I hope the whole garden will be full of them. And we will just lie out there in the grass all day and listen to the birds and have some sandwiches and... Oh, I mean, never mind. It's not like we... I, I mean, it's not like I ever thought this would work out. I mean, you're an elf and I'm an orc. It would be really stupid to assume that we... Hey, no, that's not fair. You can't just stroke my hair and act like everything was alright. Don't do that to me. Because you'll go to the Grey Havens and sail back to Valinor like all the other elves. And it's not exactly like they'll let me come along, now will they? I mean, you can't just go to your elf buddies like, Hey, I want you to meet my girlfriend. She hit me over the head with a latrine mace and now we're dating. You'll sail to the Undying Lands, and I will stay behind, here, all alone, and sit in my garden, and drink tea, and stare into the sunset, and I'll be so cold, because I won't have anyone to snuggle with. <gasps> what do you mean? You wouldn't? You wouldn't sail away? But your people, and your- You'd stay for me? No, no, you can't do that. That would mean that you would fade away and die one day. I can't let you do that. <laughs> you want to try my potatoes? And my carrots? And sit on the porch with me? And sundowns? And tea? And snuggles? <laughs> you would stay with me? You would forfeit Valinor and choose a mortal life for me in our little house with our little garden. Oh, can we have a work? I promise I'll take care of him and feed him and walk him every day. I always wanted a work ever since I was a little orkling. Okay, when I was a really little orkling, I originally wanted to have a mumak, but I see how we can't keep a mumak in our little cottage. Come on, come to the kitchen. Dinner is ready. Plus, I need your input for the decorations. I want to have curtains. I never had curtains before. Do you only put them before the windows or also before the door? I'm not really sure. Would pink be okay, or is that too girly? Anyways, I want them to match the oven mittens. Oh, and I'll need a wall shelf right over there for my skull collection. What? No, we are not throwing out my skulls. I put a lot of work into collecting them. They bear a lot of fond memories. Like this one is from some foul-mouthed Minas Morgul maggot that won't be calling me Snaga again anytime soon. And I want to put them on display in our cute little kitchen with the ornamental plates and the fruit baskets. Plus, we need something to serve the drinks in when we have guests over. I mean, maybe you elves like to drink your tea from piles of hot sand, but... Oh, don't you worry. There are no elven skulls among them. Okay, maybe just a few. But I wanted to crochet little beanies for them. 
Huh? No, I don't know how to crochet. I thought that maybe you could teach me. Uh, well, I kind of assumed you did. I mean, you're an elf, and you have all this cutesy and flowery gear, so I just kind of assumed. I mean, look at yourself. Look at your battle armor. Why does it look like it was made of leaves and vines and stuff? There are no spikes, no blood splatters, no chopped off enemy body parts. Look at yourself and tell me you wouldn't assume that someone who dresses like this would know how to crochet. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Seems like we're both not free of bias, huh? I'm sorry. Are you angry now? I didn't mean to... Oh. This feels nice. How did I even survive all those years without you to cuddle with me? You know, we can throw out the skulls if you really don't. Uh-huh. You don't mind them all that much? Oh, I love you! What? A wall shelf? Oh, that's super nice of you, darling. But that can wait. Let's have dinner first, and a few more snuggles!